So your father has already visited Netherfield, I dare say. Of course. And what did he report? That Mr Bingley was not in. Look. There goes father. Where to? To visit Mr Bingley, of course. Unknown to mother. But I thought he would not. He loves to surprise with Charlotte. To repay pain with pleasure. Even though he must first inflict the pain to bring about the pleasure. Of course. Wait and see. I hope Mr. Bingley may like it, Lizzie. How are we to know what Mr. Bingley likes, since we are not to visit? But you forget, Mama. Mrs. Long promised to introduce him to us at the assembly. I do not believe Mrs. Long would do any such thing. She is a selfish <coughs> woman and has two nieces of her own. <coughs> only one or two of you have been boys. The rest would have had brothers to bring their friends home. And we would not be so in want of male company and protection. We have father to come to I referred to male company that spoke, Jane. Don't keep coughing so, Kitty, for heaven's sake. You'll tear my nerves to pieces. Of course, there are shreds already. The reasons, I will not tell you. Kitty has no discretion in her cough. You're quite right, my dear. Mr. Bennett speaks. She times the meal, it seems. What do you say, Mary? Does not your sister Kitty time her coughing ill? Speak up, girl. A young lady of deep reflection must have something to say on the subject. One coughs when one must, does not one? <laughs> one coughs when one must. Mrs. Bennet, I was wrong. You have at least one daughter of great wit and intelligence. I hope Mr. Bingley will be most impressed. Oh, one coughs when one must. A truly profound statement. It'll be all over London society. Mark my words, in next to no time. What use is Mr Bingley to any of us, since you are too unkind to call? He might admire Lizzie's new hat, perhaps, and be useful for that. Oh, I am sick of Mr Bingley. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm sorry to hear that, but why didn't you tell me so before? If I'd known this morning, I certainly wouldn't have called on him. Still, most unfortunate. But as I have actually paid the call, we cannot escape the acquaintance now. Miss Bent, I have wronged you. What is he like? Oh, Father, do tell us. <laughs> Mr Bingley is, um, well, quite young, reasonably handsome, has no wife, five sisters, but only two here at Netherfield. He's not averse to local company and even means to attend the next assembly ball with a large party. Oh. To be fond of dancing is a certain step towards falling in love and falling in love to marrying... You may rest at peace, my dear wife. Oh, what an excellent father you have, girls. Have I not <laughs> always told you so? I do not know how we will make amends for his kindness. Lydia, my love, you must have a new dress. Although you are the youngest, I dare say Mr Bingley will dance with you at the ball. I may be the youngest and the smallest, but I'm not afraid. Mr Bennet, will Mr Bingley soon be returning your call? Did he furnish you with that impression? You didn't tell him about the girls. As little as possible, Mrs. Bennet. In view of their ignorance and silliness, it seemed sensible. I dare say he may call. And now I've said all I will say on the subject, and I do not wish to hear any more about it. And Kitty? Yes, Papa? You may now cough as much as you choose. <laughs> 